Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the Rudiger Row using an instant cold pack. Um, what I've done here is, is I've exposed one end by cutting it open, uh, discarding the water bladder that's on the inside of the instant cold pack, and I'm showing you the ammonium nitrate, or at least I think it's ammonium nitrate, it should be, on the inside, which is a fairly strong oxidizer. Um, some code packs have urea or ammonium chloride, but I'm fairly confident that this one is ammonium nitrate. Um, you'll see me here, I have to actually set up my materials a little bit differently when I'm using the contents of the code pack. I'm going to actually use a smaller piece of cotton to pour the ammonium nitrate onto. I'm going to take that part and I'm going to roll it up so I'm going to have actually two rows. The first one's going to contain the ammonium nitrate, which you see me pouring onto the cotton here. And I'm going to take that, roll it up carefully without trying to touch it, and I'm going to try to crush and mash the contents up in it as I roll the first row. I'm going to take that row and I'm going to place it inside the other cotton ball, and I'm going to roll it up. The reason why I'm using a separate piece of cotton to roll up the ammonium nitrate is because it doesn't work too well when it's just a single piece of cotton. It seems to want to leak out, get onto the surfaces, and uh, just basically cause your roll to slide. And uh, you don't want that. But the way I described seems to be the best way, at least for me, to use uh, the ammonium nitrate with the fire roll, which actually works really well. Now my surfaces, uh, I've left them outside all night and they're kind of slippery. I think something from the trees has leaked down onto them and it caused uh, my surfaces just to basically slide and I couldn't get a good grip. But this still shows that the contents of the code pack actually works really, really well. Guys, I'm not suggesting that you duplicate what you see here. Yeah, my roll there flew back off on to me almost, and that's not what I wanted. If you choose to duplicate this, which I recommend that you don't, um, don't inhale this, guys. It's, these chemicals can be extremely dangerous. I was thinking about uh, switching stones because I have another demonstration to share with you right after this one. In this uh, next demonstration, guys, uh, I wanted to show that uh, the contents of the hand warmer that I did just a few days ago, um, even though it no longer will heat up, um, it still is a viable uh, material to use with the fire rope. Because basically, at this point, it's just it's just rust and carbon mixed with it, which is a perfect uh, accelerant to use with the Rudiger rope. You'll just see me. Uh, getting it, pouring it onto the cotton, and there you go. So if you have these guys and you're using them outdoors, just uh, hold on to them because they have actually purposes outside of just, you know, the fire roll themselves even after they've been used. Some people actually put them in their packs to absorb moisture and, and keep it off of their tools and maybe their high carbon steel knives, you know. At least that's what I've heard. I'm not really sure how true that is, but I guess it's possible. Anyway, uh, I'm going to roll this up. Uh, I had to actually switch back to the first stone because, like I said, there's something leaked out onto my stones. I tried to clean them off with some cotton rolls, but to no avail, you know. I eventually did get some grip. I think that uh, the rust, the iron oxide here, actually assisted with the grip, so that's, that's a good thing. Here in a few more moments, you'll see that I get a nice ember, and I'm actually going to blow it to flame kind of funny guys uh, the hand warmers when you shake them up that's an exothermic reaction whereas with uh, the contents of a code pack that's an endothermic reaction so we kind of have like uh, opposites here <laughs> in this video uh, endothermic uh, basically pertains to uh, an absorption of heat not necessarily heating things up but absorbing it and when you crush one of those code packs that ammonium nitrate's mixing with the water and it rapidly cools 
the contents down. And that's why it gets cold. So that's your endothermic reaction with a cold pack. Whereas with an exothermic, an increase in heat from uh, the contents that you see me using here in this demonstration is uh, oxygen mixing with moisture and the iron powder itself. And that's your exothermic reaction. It's just a neat little tip. I thought I'd throw that in. Uh, guys, uh, if you have any comments or questions, just feel free to post them below. And uh, I will try to put as many videos as I can out as time permits. You know, I get busy. I know you guys are busy too. But uh, like I say before, most of these videos are from my own personal documentation. And uh, you can post if you want to below. But you guys have a good night. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Goodbye.